Over the last couple of weeks, we've began a new study, and, and that's in that study we've been looking at what real Christianity looks like. And by doing so, we've been looking at the, the top reasons, the, the top excuses that people give to uh, avoid Christianity, to not want anything to do with Christianity. And in the process of, of going through and learning how that we could better convey the message of Christ, the better way that we can go about sharing truth with others, uh, in that process that we've been learning to do that, we've also been able to stop and, and reflect and maybe take a look at our own lives and our own Christian walk and, and see, are we measuring up, are we meeting uh, Christ's model for Christianity? We've been doing this, like I said, over the last couple of weeks, and we've got a few more weeks to go. But today, we're going to be looking at well, we're going to be looking at something different. Are you ready? Here we go. Today, we are going to begin to look at a, another reason, another myth or excuse that is used by people who don't want anything to do with Christianity. Maybe it's also something that you, like I've been saying, in your past or, or from time to time have used, uh, or, or maybe it's just something that you have, have wondered about. Maybe it's something that you have questioned within yourself, and uh, this is the, the idea, the reason against Christianity, the excuse that Christians just, they simply don't own the truth. That it doesn't matter what I believe, as long as I believe in something. Uh, or, or maybe even, you know, this world would be so much more peaceful and, and more loving if we would all just agree to disagree, or just agree that none of the religions, none of the world's religions are any good. That they're all a bunch of hooey, and we, and we should just leave them alone. But the idea that Christians do not own or, or have a monopoly on the truth is what we're going to be looking at today. You know, the worldview is, well, it's 2018. I can be and do and say anything that I want to be. I can, I can be a man if I want to be a man. I can be a woman. I can be a dog. I can be a unicorn if I want to be. And the, that same viewpoint, that same idea carries over into our idea uh, of what religion or faith or, or belief that we uh, uh, decide to chase after, decide to uh, commit our lives to. But the, the question that most people really uh, want to look at, really want an answer to, the question that they really have is, what is truth? What is truth? What makes this religion any better than that one? Which one is truthful? And this is not something new. In John chapter 18 and verse 38, Jesus, at that time, he was standing before Pilate. If you remember, and, and Pilate was questioning Jesus. He was being brought forth to stand trial before he received his, his sentence to die for us. And during that, that, that time that he was standing in front of Pilate, during that time that he was standing trial, Pilate told him in, in uh, chapter 18 of John and, and verse 38, he says, uh, what is truth? He asked the same question that many people want to know today. He said, what is truth? And you too, like I said, uh, maybe you have said or heard something like this. I don't believe Christianity is true. I don't understand why people think that Christianity is more truthful than other religions. Christianity is probably the one that withholds the least truth out of all of them. I mean, what about Allah? Or better yet, what about Gandhi? I mean, are they fictional? No, they're not. Of course they're not. I mean, there's pictures of them. 
If anything, Gandhi is more truthful than Jesus. Gandhi is proven to be a person. You know why? Because Gandhi has pictures. There's quotes of Gandhi. I mean, there is proof that Gandhi was a living person. Jesus, he has quotes. In the Bible, the fictional Bible. He doesn't even have pictures. He didn't have paintings. There's nothing to prove that Jesus was a real person. If I mean, Jesus is fictional. He's a few words written down on a few pieces of paper by a few lunatics who had nothing better to do than fiddle with their fingers. So, why should I place my trust or my faith in someone who's never been seen, never been heard? They say people have seen him. They say people have heard him. They say these psycho lunatics that are driving in cars say that they've seen them and heard them. No, you haven't. You're hearing stuff. You need to go and get checked. I, I can't place my trust in something fictional. I can't place my trust in something that I've never seen before. And that's why I choose Gandhi over Jesus. Uh, like our friend from the video, uh, you might be asking yourself, what is truth? And, and like I was saying, this is, this is really the question. This is really the question that we need, that we desire to have answered in our lives. What is truth? And I went to, for this, uh, I went to dictionary.com and I typed in the word truth. And, and this is what came about. It's, it's a noun. It's a, it's a plural noun, and it say, it, the, some of the meanings for truth are, you know, number one, the true or actual state of a matter. Two, the conformity with fact or reality, something that you can verify. Three, a verified or indisputable fact, proposition, principle, or something like that. Number four, the state or character of being true. Number five, actuality or actual existence. Kind of like our, our friend in the video was saying. She wanted to be able to cling to something, to see something, and believe something that was true, that was uh, uh, in actual existence. Number six, an, an obvious or accepted fact, truism or platitude. Number seven, honesty, integrity, truthfulness. Eight, and this is an ideal or a fundamental reality apart from uh, any other perceived experience. Uh, number nine, an agreement with a standard or an original. Uh, number ten, accuracy. Accuracy. And then constancy would be the last one constancy so what is truth when we're looking for what is truth we're looking for things that are constant things that are uh, factual things that can be proven and well there are a lot of different uh, religions worldviews beliefs different faiths that are that are in the world today at best guesses uh, experts, they, they put that number somewhere around 4,200 different faiths, worldviews, beliefs, and or, or even religions, if you wanted to call it that. So, out of all of these different world religions, faiths, beliefs, uh, how do we know which one is right? How do we know which one is true? Well, there's a, a process that these experts, they go through in, in lining up all of the different world religions and into their little box and, and deciding which ones are considered major world religions, which ones are considered not really that uh, maybe truthful. Maybe, uh, and, and the process that they go through, uh, they, they look at things like how many followers does this world religion have? They look at things like, uh, what is this religion based upon? Is it something that can be seen? Is it something that people really look at, believe, and buy into? Uh, they, they look at things and, and they, they put them into these categories. And one of the top 
three, well, well, there's 12 that they, they link together into this, the top tier category. And, the, and this top tier category is the, the, the most recognized world religions. And in there we, we see things like uh, uh, Islam and, and Buddhism and, and Hinduism. And, and, well, in the top three of that 12, we also find Christianity. And, and this is for a reason. This is uh, because at this time, at the present day and time, uh, Christianity has the most followers uh, in the world, globally. Now, if we don't get our act together, uh, it, it's said that in the coming uh, generation that uh, Islam is going to surpass Christianity, which uh, that in itself... Well, that would be a bad thing. Uh, we, we don't really see uh, the world in the same view. We don't look through the same set of goggles. We don't see the world through the same fishbowl. Uh, but I digress. What, what my uh, point in saying was, you know, uh, Christianity is one of the top three recognized major world religions. And we claim to be Christians ourselves. We're at a Christian church this morning, and, and we claim to be Christians. And as Christians, we claim to hold a, a, a monopoly. We claim to have the truth. We follow Jesus. We follow God. And in that, we claim to have the truth, to follow after truth. But what makes Christianity right and the other world religions, those 4,200 different recognized world religions, what makes them wrong and Christianity right? That's the question that the world is really wanting to know. Well, we tend to, to judge a belief or a faith system uh, as being uh, trustworthy and relevant uh, based upon its followers, right? We, we, we tend to, well, like we've d d talked about before, we tend to look at a group of people or a person and, and judge them by the fruits that they produce, by their actions, by, by certain things about their lifestyle that we see and we say, wow, we want to be a part of that. Or we make a decision and we say, I'd rather be over here. I don't want anything to do with that group of people. We judge uh, these, these world religions, these beliefs, these faiths, according to their followers. And, and like I've said before, it's, it's, it's our speech, it's our actions, it's, it's our dress that get the world's attention. And, and so this, but, you know, we, we have a problem with that. Though you might belong to a certain religion, though you might belong to a certain faith or certain belief, if you're not living in accordance with your faith, with your belief, with your, your system of values that goes along with your uh, religion, your set of uh, beliefs, well, you could tend to mislead people. You know, I'm sure, because I know for a fact I do, and, and I've been guilty and still am from time to time guilty of being that person, and you might know people uh, yourselves who claim to be Christians, but yet they don't act like Christians. They don't carry out themselves and, and go on carrying their, 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 into their normal everyday lives apart from just Sunday morning at church or, or, or Wednesday night or any other day at church. They don't go into their normal lives operating and carrying themselves and acting as Christians. So this, is, this in itself is a, a problem with judging an entire uh, world religion or, or faith or belief even denomination for that matter, uh, based on the actions of a few or, or of one. The truth of a, of a religious system, the, the, to be able to determine if it is a religious system, a belief system that is uh, built on truth, uh, it, it cannot, it absolutely cannot be uh, based upon its followers. It, it, it cannot be. It has to be based upon and built upon and judged by the truth of that religion's uh, origins or who makes up the Godhead of that faith or religion. That's, that's only fairness. Like I was saying, I know lots of Christians who don't carry on and act as very nice people or as very good Christians. Uh, during my time in the military, I was able to interact with 
uh, people of the Islam faith, people of the Muslim faith, who in carrying on with them from day to day, I can honestly tell you that there are some of those people I encountered that are, they, well, they're better people than some of the Christians I know. They carry themselves better. So we can't judge one faith against another based on the actions of a few. You know, when we're trying to stack these religions up and decide which one is best, which one is truth, which one owns truth, well, we have to recognize that only God owns the truth. God owns the truth. Uh, we get the truth uh, or the opportunity from God to be able to discover the truth for ourselves. We, we get the opportunity to, to discover uh, truth through Christianity only when Christ himself reveals himself to us. It's, so it's, it's God that owns the truth. It's not man. It's not a, a particular religion or sect. It's God. God alone. Because God owns truth. And how does he do this? Well, well for, for us, for us of the Christian faith, God reveals himself to us. And how does he do that? Well, he does that in one of three ways. First of all, he, God reveals himself to us through creation, through his creation of the world. In Psalms chapter 19, verse 1, it tells us that the heavens declare the glory of God. Well, God created the world. God created the heavens. He created you and created me. It's through that creation process that we can look and we can say, wow, God did all this. And we can decide to believe. In Romans, I'm going to read that. In Romans chapter 1, if we'll take a look at at Romans chapter 1, down at the uh, 20th verse, it tells us, it says, For since the creation of the world, his visible attri invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and the Godhead, so that they are without excuse. What does this mean? This means that if we can step outside in the morning and we can see the heavens and we can see the trees, we can see how pretty the grass is, we can see how, how wonderful the flowers are, we can see each other, we can see other people, and we can see beauty all around us, then we have no excuse. We have no reason to doubt that God is the creator of the universe, that he has put all this together, that he is the master designer, he's the master builder. And, and, and that right there tells us that, look, it doesn't matter what it is that, that we want to believe or not believe from one time or another. It says that we have no excuse if we can see all this wonderful, beautiful things and, 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 and still decide that we don't want to believe God. Apart from that, the second thing, God reveals himself to us through his holy scriptures, through his word. This is, this is not man's word, not, not like the, uh, the, the young lady in the video said. It's, it's not a bunch of crazy men with a, with a pen writing uh, with their just crazy stuff. It's, it's God. God, and, and the Word tells us this in, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. It, it tells us that all Scripture is from God. It's all for you. It's God breathed. It's, it's God allowed these men to create the, the, the Word of God, the Bible. It's a living, living, breathing document that we get to hold in our hands. And it is the Word of God. It is the Word of God. We're told in John... Chapter 1, verse 1, uh, that the, the, in the beginning was God. And guess what? In the beginning there was God, and, and, and God, in the beginning there was the Word, and, and God was that Word. That's what we're told. And, and so it, it, it goes beyond the crazy men that decided to write the Bible because they didn't just decide this. They were inspired to do so so that you and so that I could read it today and, and we could have a connection to God. We could know about His heart. And that's what 2 Timothy was telling us in chapter 3. It's that all Scripture is from God. It's all for you. It's, it's just so that we can see God's love for us, see His plan for us, see His design 
for us. See how much that He cares about us, about me, about you. You know, there's a process that, that old documents, that ancient documents have to go through once they're discovered, uh, once they're dug up, if that's the means in which they're found. And archaeologists and experts, and all, they, they come together and they have a process for how they go through authenticating these old manuscripts. And I, I, I don't find it coincidence. I don't find it coincidence that this authentication process is very difficult and that in spite of the, its difficulty, throughout time, throughout all of history, there have only been a very, very few books or writings or poems or manuscripts that have been authenticated and accepted as, as authentic uh, uh, works, authentic writings that uh, have passed through all kind of years of, of, of scrutiny. And one of these writings, one of these documents, one of these manuscripts is the Word of God. If you just take a look at the New Testament itself, under the, the light of, of scrutiny of, of these experts who come together and, and begin to look at things, they, they looked at, and this they were able to authenticate over 24 thousand old uh, test uh, I'm sorry old writings of the New Testament these are writings from from around the world writings that were found over here in Africa writings that were found over here in Asia writings that were found all over the world they were all authenticated and what was interesting to me when I began to look at this and is that out of, out of these 24,000 copies that were of the New Testament that were able to be authenticated as truth, as fact, as all being the same, no differences between them. 99.5%, I'll say that again, 99.5% of those 24,000 writings, 24,000 copies of the New Testament of the Holy Bible were authenticated to be correct and accurate and all translated the same. Now, how, how is it to me? Or how is it to you? Or somebody please explain it to us. How is it that next to the New Testament of our Holy Bible, the closest uh, writing that has uh, been able to uh, be transcribed between all the different languages and found here, a copy here, and a copy in this bookstore here, and maybe in this market over here. The closest uh, manuscript or writing that we have that has been authenticated, been able to uh, be tracked, that it was copied in its exact verbatim every single time, Homer's Iliad. The popular uh, book, Homer's Iliad. But next to the New Testament's 24,000, guess how many times Homer's Iliad was copied word for word or almost exactly just a little over 600. Out of all the documents, all the writings in existence, our New Testament has been copied the most and, and accurately and shared with this person and this family and, and over here and over there the most. And I find this interesting because this to me proves, look, this is God breathed. If no other book in history comes close to matching this type of a success of authentication, of, of, of dictation, of copy, no other book stands beside our Bible, that, that's proof right there for me at least that it is God breathed. God breathed. The third way that God reveals Himself to us is, well, it's through His Son. Through His Son, Jesus. In the book of Acts, chapter 4 and verse 12, we're told that there's no other name under heaven. No other name under heaven that, that whereby we can, we can go and, and be saved with. We, we can't go and, and use the name of Allah. We can't go and use the name of, of, of 
Bill Gates or, or anybody else or, or whatever unicorn crazy thing you want to dream up is your belief system, your faith, your religion. You can't be saved from it, but the Word of God tells us that no other name under heaven allows us to be saved except through that of Jesus Christ. None. You know, another thing that's interesting to me about this is that you know, out of all of the religions, all of the faiths, all of the, the different uh, belief systems throughout all of history, the only leader uh, or religious leader, the only uh, deity to ever claim to be God himself is our Lord Jesus Christ. None of the other ones did this. None of the other ones do this. Only Christianity holds this. And, and there's got to be a reason for this. The reason is, it's true. It is true. Our deity, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He is a part of the Godhead, the Trinity, three in one. We have to believe this in Matthew. Chapter 16, verse 17, Peter, he, he looked at, at Jesus and he said, You are the Son of God. And Jesus looked at him and said, You know why you know this? Do you know why you know this? It's not because I said it to you. It's not because James or, or anybody else told you this. It's because this has been revealed to you by God. This has been revealed to you by God, and this is what we're talking about here. This is the third way that we know that Christianity is real to us, that it holds the truth of, of, of God's Word, that it is not like the other faiths or, or religions. Christianity holds truth, and it's, it's one of the ways, like I said, is because God reveals it to us, just like He did with Peter, just like He did and in John. In chapter 10, Jesus said, he says, I and my Father are one. He was talking about God. He, he, he told him, or he, he told his, his followers, he, he says, I and my Father are one. He, he proved himself through, well, not only his word, but he proved himself through his miracles and by the prophecies that he fulfilled. He himself fulfilled the only religious head in history, Jesus. The only religious leader in history to say that your belief in Him dictates where your place will be in eternity. None of the other faiths talk about this. They say, yeah, you can make it to heaven. But it's not as though you, you have to believe upon a certain person. You can be good enough on your own merits for most of those religions. We can only bridge that gap one way. One way. And that way is through Jesus. And we're, we're told this in the book of John. In the book of John, chapter 14, and verse 6, it, it, we're told. It, it's a very uh, popular verse. Jesus, he goes on in, in verse 6, and he, he tells us, he says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Nobody. You can't get there by yourself. You can't get there through uh, Mahatma Gandhi. You can't get there through the unicorn you believe in or any other uh, way. I am the only way to make it. I'm the only bridge that you're going to have to God our Father. And he says it right here. He says the key to our whole lesson here today. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. He says it right there. He says, I'm the truth. And I'm the life. He says, I am the truth. There have been and there will always be until the end of our time. Good men, good men that have lived on this earth, good men that have gone on and, and done great and good things. Men like possibly uh, Mahatma Gandhi that uh, the young lady was telling us about in our, in our beginning video there. 
There have been and there always will be good men, but there has only been one man. There has only now one person, one like Jesus, and that's Jesus himself. And Jesus, like we just read, like we just discovered, he is the truth. And we have to cling to that. We have to believe that. If, if seeing is believing, and if, if proof and evidence equals, or, or if that equals truth, well, we do have it. Uh, in many ways, we could say, you know, you're right. Maybe Christians don't own truth, but God does. Uh, but we decide to follow after Jesus. We decide to follow and, and begin a relationship with God, then we too inherit that truth. The truth of Jesus. The truth of God. And we do have it, unlike the other world religions, the other world beliefs. Jesus Christ is the way. Jesus Christ is the truth. And Jesus Christ is the life. That's all I've got for today. So to now we'll, we'll move on beyond this and we'll begin to look at uh, and discuss this topic. And, and I've got a, a handout with a few questions for you. And, and we'll, we'll begin to, to grow uh, together in our faith, in our uh, ability to talk with others about Jesus as we go through uh, the rest of this time that we have together. I appreciate you sticking with me. Now stick with me a little longer and participate in the group discussion.